good day for squirrels to be out. So here we are. We're gonna be metal detecting in town today. We're at the side of the Taggart family. Uh, their son left uh, from this town that I'm in and went into the Western Reserve College, which at the time was in the mid 1850s. Like I always revert to is the atlases. I'll show you on an atlas that gives me definite proof of uh, timing, uh, existence, and uh, significance to this site. So I'm going to be using the V3i today with the 6x10. There's power lines that are almost over top of where you're at, and there's power lines on another road that's intersecting right here. So there's going to be dealing with a lot of EMI. My settings, my sensitivity is going to be lower, and we'll go over those here in a little bit. The 6x10 also helps out with uh, not uh, sucking up as much EMI as the D2 and the Ultimate 13. This would not be a site for an Ultimate 13. You might get away with the D2, uh, but I prefer a smaller coil on these sites. The father was a Dr. W. W. Tagger, a doctor for this town, so it's a very predominant site. This is an 1873 atlas. I lost my note somewhere along the line, and I had an 1853 atlas that also showed this house in the same location. That piece right here that you can still see without my finger covering it up had got added on since this map had been made between 53 and 73. So the original home would be just this southern portion minus that piece right there. We have power lines that run along this street and this street, which is part of what I'll be dealing with on this site, uh, dealing with EMI. So that's for why I'm using the reduced size coil. And my settings will be set a little lower. So only through testing and getting used to the site, since this is my first time out, will I know what my settings need to be. They're different at every site that you go to. So let's get started. Will be some road noise today, and I'm sorry for that. And on the settings that you're setting, see the power lines are here, and then we also have power lines here. That's two routes of uh, electricity running around here, EMI, that I'm going to be picking up. Just because I'm going to be over here setting my, uh, doing my setup for my V3i doesn't mean it's going to be the same for over here. As I get closer to these power lines, the EMI increases. So when you're on a site, just because you set it up in one spot, you start getting a bunch of uh, you know, uh, bad signals in places, uh, you know, you're going to have to change your settings as you move around in your site. This will be a best guess for what I'm going to be setting up today just by what I've learned throughout using the V3i. There is no set standard for a specific site. You know, today I want to run in all, in all metal and discriminant channel. So I'm gonna go into programs and like, you know, you've seen me always do, I go into my high pro. Now I'm gonna enter into expert menu, which you don't have to do this, but I see my, uh, which I just made a mistake, the, uh, my loop selection. I have the six by 10 on, so I need to change that. Eclipse DD. So we're good to go. So now I'm going to go into expert menu and 10 high pass. I'm going to try to get away with uh, seven and a half high pass. High pass deals with EMI a little bit better than band pass. My recovery delay, since I'm going to assume this is trashy, I'm going to take this down to 40. But that might change as time goes. And I might realize that this site's not as trashy as I think it is. Sensitivity. RX gain, I'm gonna bring that down to 10. I might get away, I might not get away with that. I might have to bring it down more. And if I can, then I'll try to work that up as I move around on the site. All metal 70, I'm gonna back that down to 88. And that's pretty much it for now. Um, if I make changes and remember, then I will let you all know as I move around the site and why I made those changes. Just real quick so you can see this. On those settings that we just went over, I went ahead and ground balanced. I'm about 30 feet away from the power lines, maybe 40. And I'm gonna move towards them. And it is actually dealing with it extremely well. You can see I'm approaching the power lines. It's starting to get a little bit, but I didn't walk over. That's amazing, actually. So what I've learned just then is that, you know, I am getting a little bit of EMI issues, some falsing right there. You can see it. But as I move away, it'll stabilize again. So as a, if I get really close to the power lines, I'm gonna reset it by hitting the pinpoint trigger. You know, everything's good. Usually when you're up in the air like this, it'll give you a lot of, a lot of problems. I'm gonna pull the trigger and let you listen to the EMI. Surprisingly, it's Sunday morning. There's not a lot going on. I'm gonna move over towards them now and do it again. I'm gonna pull the pinpoint trigger. You can see it's starting to build already because it's just picking up falses. Hear it? 
there's a lot coming from right at the power line. Actually, it's not the main power line. There's a service line which right there going to the house. And that's where I'm getting most of it. Going away from it. So I know that dealing with those power lines, it's going to be somewhat easy because I have a smaller coil on my settings are down. But man, that service line right there is going to be tough. It's my first repeatable target. Today, since I'm in somebody's yard, I use a ground cloth. It's always best practice and switch from a shovel to a digging spade. Looks like a dime, a modern one. 1993 dime. Well, not really what we're looking for. It is a coin, so let's move on to the next. As you can tell, we're still by the tree. Shade trees make good places to lose stuff. And there it is. Crusty, crusty Lincoln penny. Been chewed on. Can't raise a date. Reading in the 50s, you got a point right here. It's probably I'm not getting it down in the hole anymore. It's over in the plug. Yeah. Looks like top of a eraser for a pencil broke off raise this and see what it is could be a nickel hopefully it's a gold ring it's about three inches deep I don't know if you saw that on the readout bring this back over it seems like it's gonna be in the plug maybe piece of a pull tab not a ring Here's something I hear from a lot of people is I get these signals, it's up in the 90s, and then I dig and nothing's there. Here's could be a reason why. Check this out. Oh man, silver dollar down in there. Well, if you pull the pinpoint trigger and there's nothing there, then it's bouncing off of a large iron signal. And I'll show you where it's at. Here's where I'm at. Big silver dollar down in the ground, you think, and then you dig and nothing's there. Well, I get over here and I watch the red light up. See it? And it's right there. Whatever it is, is large. It's giving me the cancelization. It's in this area. If I start over here, there's nothing there. Going back over to it. Whatever it is, it's really big. And I'm coming off of the halo that's on that big piece of iron, just on the edge of that signal, and getting, you know, a high reading. So always pull your pinpoint trigger and investigate and find out, see if it's something there before you try digging. This is a very jumpy signal. It went from the 50s to the 80s to the 40s. It's all over the place. I don't know what it is. There was a lot of low numbers in there too, so. I've been digging a lot of targets, not videotaping everything, just because there's so much to dig. I hope that does have anything to do with what we just dug, and it does. So, let's see if there's anything else in the dirt. To be wishful, nothing. So. Piece of foil. Got a big, awesome old home. You know it goes back to 1873 and 1853. And here's the, things about, the thing about metal detecting, is there's two types of sites that you're gonna run into. The ones that have been hunted, there's hardly anything in the yard, and the ones that are trashy. So you either got trashy or nothing in the yard. So I'm at one right now, I'm finding pennies, dimes, bunch of other trash, aluminum that I would have, you know, I'm digging. Somebody else most likely would have dug. So when you come up to an old house, that's the two types of sites you're gonna find. It's just not just a bunch of coins laying out there. And uh, so I'm happy with it so far, even though I'm digging a lot of trash. This is the first time out. You can see on the old house, if you don't know, these are sandstone foundations. You can either have like solid stones. You see this one's been, you know, ornately done. So a lot of more predominant homes had this done to make it more decorative. On these sidewalks that I'm tracking around, like there's one here. This isn't that old concrete, you know, that's definitely 1900s. But you got two entryways, one going that way, one going that way, and then a third or three entryways, and then a front main sidewalk. 
It probably wasn't always concrete either. Most likely it was wood at one time prior to the concrete because concrete didn't really come into use a whole lot until uh, later on. And you'll see uh, I'm around the Amish people quite a bit and they, uh, they use wood slots running out in front of their house. Right here I've got the solid 68. I believe it's a penny. It's three inches deep. I don't think it's an old penny. I'm hoping at least it's a wheat penny. And there it is. Whatever it may be, I believe it's a penny. I'm gonna move you around. So we take a look at our, always looks like another one. Ah, it's 1980, that's when I was born. Well, I'm not gonna call that old because I don't wanna be old, so that penny's pretty young. Dug a hard hitting 18 and it's a, looks like a Lincoln, or not a Lincoln, but a nickel. 1998 I think is what it was. Somewhere around in there. Not that significant, but it is a nickel. Proud of myself when I find nickels on low PDIs, even the new ones. Got a solid 88 at two inches. So I'm trying to buzz through these ones that are, I'm pretty sure it's modern clad, but gonna videotape anyway, just in case it's not. I'm gonna say it's a quarter. And it's a quarter. A big 1994 quarter, clad all the way. It's responding like a dime, so I'm thinking it's maybe a rosy by the depth. There's the center of it. It's four and a half, which is, most of my clouds have been one to two inches. So, we're getting to 85, it's saying six inches, pinpoint, you know, five and a quarter. Like, it just disappeared from the screen, but you saw it before. So we're gonna dig this and see what we get. But I have had good luck on the quarters. I've got tons of clad quarters that are dark and brown you probably wouldn't use to purchase something, but they work great if the car washes. Just a tip. So here's our dark clod. I think it's somewhere over here. Uh, there's what it is. It looks like a twist off cap not a dime so there you have it all right i believe this is the first find of the day that might not be a lincoln penny or a quarter i've been finding tons and tons of clad so let's see what we got it's a wheat penny or a wheat cent maybe 1954 1951 i'm happy with that no more clad I mean, I see digging a lot of clad. Getting a lot of clad. So what kind of site do we think we have here? Is it a site that's been hunted out before? You know, say in the 80s or 70s? And all these newer clad coins that I'm finding are just all over the place and been dropped after those guys or people had been there metal detecting? Or is it a site where I'm just finding all the surface stuff two to five inches deep and uh, I haven't listened to the good signals that for like a barber quarter that might be eight inches deep? I can't turn my machine up because of EMI and issues around the site with that and the sensitivity settings. You know, they're not like what I can do out in a big open field. So what do you all do with sites like this? Me, you know, I hunt just like I did. You know, I went out there, I set it at the best settings that I could get and got as deep as I possibly could. Did I listen to all the really faint signals? No, you know, I was excited. It was the first time out on that site. I figured I was going to find a ton of stuff, old stuff. But, you know, I just have that one wheat penny and the rest of it was clad. So, I mean, it's a typical site. It's cleaned up now. You know, I could go back and the surface stuff's out of the way but and be able to listen to deeper stuff. But, you know, what are you all doing in, in on sites like this? You know, just trying to get a consensus to, you know, f feed some information out there. So either beginners or, you know, myself, I'm not going to say I'm an expert or, you know, distinguished at anything here. You know, I'm just like anybody else that's out there. And I'm sure you all running into sites just like this. Ex expecting all kinds of old coins, awesome finds. And then you just end up with a bunch of cl clad and pop tabs and stuff like that. You know, it's got to be in there. You know, so many generations of families have lived in that house. So it's got to be stuff in the ground. So I'm thinking about moving on to my next site or possibly going back, depending on what everybody kind of says on here. So... Please uh, make some comments and tell me what you all are doing.